Hi everyone, Chris Torres here from the Tourism Marketing Agency and welcome to another Digital Tourism Show. This episode, I will be discussing how you can market your tourism business in the post-COVID world. I will be sharing some stats in terms of how things stand at the moment and why I think domestic travel is going to be the strongest market going forward for at least the next 18 months to two years. I will also be showing some stats in terms of flight numbers, hotel numbers, which gives a good indication of how tours and activities will play a part and how popular that they will be with amongst travellers. But not only that, I will be discussing some key demographics that you could be targeting now for either capturing those customers now or in the future. So this episode is all about marketing your business in the post-COVID world. So welcome to the Digital Tourism Show, episode 245. <laughs> So marketing your tour business in the post-COVID world. As we all know, the whole industry has been devastated with COVID. Um, whether you are tours and activities, whether you are in accommodation uh, or whether you're in hospitality, everyone has been affected by this, no matter how big or how small. Um, but there are opportunities out there. There are ways that you can market your business now, either for bookings coming up, because a lot of uh, operators and destinations uh, are starting to see bookings come in because restrictions are being lifted. Um, some are going back to being in lockdown again, so it will depend on your destination. But even with the, the advice that I'm giving you here, this is something that you could be looking at for bookings later in the year or more so bookings in 2021. Now, the key demographics are what are we, we are seeing as a, as a tourism marketing agency from some of our own customers, but also from the advice out there by everyone else from different uh, from, from arrival and from the flights that you can look at. I'll show you some of the stats as well. That's the, the information is there and it's key indicators to say, OK, this is what's going to happen. And this is what's more likely going to happen because um, I believe international travel from what you will see is not going to pick up any time pre-COVID levels to at least 2022, 2023 or beyond. So it's going to take at least 18 to 24 months to get back to those levels and hopefully get back to those levels. Though that's not to say over the next 18 to 24 months, international travel won't pick up during that time. It will and hopefully will do, uh, but it's not going to be to the same levels. So hopefully throughout this uh, workshop, I can show you those stats. I can show you some of the key demographics that you should be targeting now, which could hopefully help generate revenue and business uh, for your tour business, hotel, accommodation, whatever that may be. So, well, hopefully, I know if you've watched any of my advice in previous episodes or throughout anything I put out on social media or blogs, etc. Now, I've been saying now is the time you even throughout this whole time, you should have been marketing your business. No, marketing should never have stopped. Yes, certain aspects may have stopped like Google Ads or something like that, which is a big outlay and a big cost for a lot of businesses. But ultimately, you could be doing things all pretty much for free, you know, creating videos, writing blogs, you know, putting up social media posts, keeping your potential customer engaged in your business and in your brand. Because ultimately, everyone, as we all know, have all been stuck at home, have all been in lockdown, uh, and we've all been surfing the web more. So we're looking for things that we wish we could be doing now or want to do once lockdowns are restricted, or are lifted rather. So you should have been giving them something to inspire to, something to read, something to watch, and really tugging on the heartstrings to say, okay, as soon as uh, lockdowns are restricted, I want to do that or I want to go there. And that's what you should have been doing up until this point. And so to be honest, to, for certain destinations, that's what you should be doing now anyway, because some obviously some are worse off than others. So give them something to inspire them, to entertain them, give them some useful content that helps them plan their next big post crisis trip. Um, and on that, you know, your customers will travel after COVID-19, but it just won't be the same. Uh, no, travel has changed probably forever, but at least people still want to travel. The demand is there. At the moment, the capacity is not there, but the demand is there. Now, our good friends, uh, who many of you already know through videos and on Tourpreneur podcasts, etc., Peter Syme, uh, based here in Scotland where I am, he has seen a huge increase and people wanting to do some a huge demand and people wanting to take out his activities of whitewater rafting, that type of thing as well, um, or sort of outdoor activities. 
but he's having to turn away a lot of work because and a lot of business because he simply just doesn't have the capacity because of you know, social distancing restrictions and everything else that comes with it. So people are there, the demand is there. So cater for that demand by giving them something to inspire to. And hopefully once restrictions are lifted in your area, that demand will increase as well. Now, domestic travel uh, is beginning to recover for many, many areas. Um, but international travel, as I says, will take around 18 months to recover, if not a little bit longer. Depends whether you are a pessimist or an optimist. Now, the reason why we can say this is because the stats speak for themselves. No, here are some stats from The Economist. And this is for hotel searches. No, we're looking at things like hotel searches, flight numbers, because that will have, obviously, an impact on tours and activities and everything else. And so the people coming to a destination. So as you can see there, Germany, France, Spain, United States, Britain and Italy, um, pretty much all apart from Germany, is seeing an increase in domestic travel and in domestic searches for hotel type products. Um, the only difference being is Germany. Germany, for whatever reason, and we're seeing this from some of our clients who are targeting Germany or German clients, that they are more inclined to travel internationally and they're seeing that happening in Germany. But most other destinations are looking at domestic. So domestic is by far the greatest one for many, many destinations going forward. So it's something uh, just to sort of enforce that this is what's happening now. But Arrival, our good friends at Arrival, you know, put out many, many stats over the last few months, um, sort of showing that you know, between May and May 2020, there'll be the lockdowns, the easing will happen between June and February 2021. You know, we'll start to see more and more customers, you know, whether it's 40 or 70% in terms of relative to 2019, coming back between March and November next year, but it's going to be December 2021, again, if you're an optimist, or even June 2023, if you're a pessimist, that it will take to get back to around about 90% of what it was in 2019. So it's going to take, this This is taking a long time, um, and many factors may come into play to affect this as well, you know, vaccines or second waves, third waves, fourth waves, or even, no, oh, God forbid, there will be another crisis down the road and there will always be some sort of crisis. And I don't want to be all doom and gloom, but I just want to sort of say, these are the stats that are out there. This is what's been said by experts. This is what we are finding as well with some of our own customers and the, the, the research that we do for them as well. So 18 months, 24 months is probably the sort of time frame you need to consider to if you are more inclined for the international customer. Because um, obviously the bigger the country's COVID-19 outbreak, the bigger the shift away it is from foreign travel. So let's look at some some stats. This is from uh, IATA, um, who are basically, uh, from their own research, international travel for 2020 is reduced by up to 55%. I actually think that's conservative. I think it'll be bigger than that. But international travel will be reduced by 55%. That's nearly 3,000 million passengers worldwide. That's $314 billion loss to the industry. That's huge numbers. So this is why we're saying, okay, you know, focus on domestic, international travel is severely going to be hit, or if you are more internationally focused, your numbers are literally going to be halved, if not more, in terms of potential customers coming here. Um, and on that, it's, this, the next point I'm going to raise is something I strongly feel. Not everyone has the same opinion. But this is what I find and this is what I strongly feel is is required. And that's not to discount. Now, I've put out something similar to this on social media recently and most people agreed with me, a few did not, and that's completely fine. Um, but in my opinion, if you have less than half of your travels coming to a destination, uh, you have lower travel numbers, that obviously means you'll have less revenue. If you add on top of that discounted tours, in my opinion, that precedes financial disaster. Now, I am never one for, even with our own marketing, with our own customers, offering discounts. To me, you should price your product accordingly because of your experience and be confident in what you do. Now, don't get into a price war. If you start going into a price war with your competitors, no matter how competitive your market is, if you start getting into a price war with them, it's just a slippery slope down from there. I've seen it in many industries and I've seen it time and time again. That if you start going down the discount route and competing with your competitors, someone will always do it cheaper, then you have to do it cheaper, and then someone will do it cheaper again. So ultimately, you're making no money. So whatever you do, and 
for whatever reason, try not to discount as much as you possibly can. There are caveats to that, though if you have, uh, there was a question on social media recently saying, hey, I've got a, uh, it's our 15 year anniversary, what do you think about a 50% discount uh, to celebrate our anniversary? Things like that are fine as one-offs, that is completely fine, but if you start discounting your products uh, and basically across the board uh, on a regular basis, to me, it's a financial disaster. Now, for me, you should be looking at creating new tours, um, creating a tour that's similar to your normal price product, creating a similar tour that's slightly cut down, a cut down version of that. So rather than a two hour tour, it may be a one hour tour and you go to less stops, but make that cheaper to bring people in and that's your sort of lead in product. And that will lead in people. And if they've had a good experience and hopefully they have and leave you a good review, they'll think, I like that company, I want to do one of the longer ones and pay even more money. So you'll actually end up getting more money in the long run because they may take out another product from you. So that's the way I would approach it. Create a separate product that's cheaper, slightly cut down, but keep your normal products as they are. Another option is to add perceived value. Now, what I mean by this is, is rather than discounting, um, no 10, 15, 20% discounts, which from experience and from the stats that are out there, and there's many of them, people are getting tired, your consumers are getting tired of 10% discounts, 15% discounts, they see through it. But by adding value to your product, it actually spurs on more revenue and, and more bookings and more uh, more uptake and more customers from you in terms of a business. Uh, to give you an example, uh, we were working with a, a customer in Ireland um, to add perceived value, um, though they were obviously focusing on a lot of American customers coming over. Um, this was pre-COVID, but they, a lot of American customers coming over to Ireland obviously tend to have, they've had family there or have, have had some connection with Ireland. So as part of their offering, if they booked up a tour with them, they would give them a six month free uh, subscription to Ancestry. So they can look at their past history and look at where their family came from. And this kept them interested before they got to Ireland and took out their trip. Now, obviously that was more for a multi-day company, so I'm not saying for a day tour company, you would be able to afford that and work that into your products. But by adding something that doesn't really cost you as much, it probably actually costs you less than giving a 20% discount and you're still making a little bit of extra money on top of that, that is what I would do rather than discounting. Add perceived value and not discounting. Again, not everyone agrees with me, but that's my belief. And I have seen from our own stats and from how we help businesses and from others, that tends to give you a better result than discounting. Because in my opinion, at the moment, um, like I said, domestic is going to be the biggest market going forward. If you are predominantly internationally focused and you do not have a domestic strategy now, I strongly believe your business is more likely to fail within that 18 months. Domestic is certainly going to be bigger. Um, as I said, I mentioned earlier, Peter Syme, he's already looking at focusing his business on domestic markets because he can't see international picking up anytime soon, even during this period. And he has been through the, this industry and done everything in, a, in this industry, as you can imagine. He's He's been there and done it. And if Peter Syme says that this is what he's focusing on, he's probably right. So domestic travel and domestic strategy is what you should be focusing on. If you do not pivot your business for domestic or do not create products or tailor your products for domestic, you are going to be hard pushed to get as much revenue as you can to make sure your business survives. So please do think about creating a domestic strategy now uh, to help make sure that that business of yours does survive something that you've worked really hard for. One of the other things I'm also saying is to focus on day tours and short breaks. Why? Well, basically at the moment, you know, people have been in lockdown, they have been stuck in their homes, some people have been on furlough, so they've not been working, so people have got less cash, but they're also just going back to work, going back to their offices or going back to their day jobs. So taking a week's holiday or a two-week break is probably not going to happen for a while because we're only just getting back. We've literally had a four, for some of us anyway, and not me for sure, but for some of us anyway, we've already had a three to four month holiday. So booking up holidays is not something that people will be able to take going forward for the foreseeable for the next few months because of timeless restrictions and everything else and money. But offering day tours, maybe a day trip or short weekend breaks that people can take out if you get trips that are multi-day, focus on them. That is something that more people will take. If you're in accommodation, look at doing um, weekend breaks away to a cabin, an Airbnb, a hotel, whatever that would be. That is probably going to be the most popular product going forward. And again, some of the stats are showing that from what we are seeing as well.
uh, one of our very first speakers on the digital tourism show, Renata, I'm sure will agree. And from what she's seeing, this is what's going to happen in terms of short weekend breaks, day day breaks, that type of thing, overnight stays, things like that are going to be more um, popular going forward, just because of time restrictions and money. I want to talk now about key demographics. So these are the demographics that I'm seeing that are becoming popular, um, popular now in terms of things that you can target uh, and demographics that you can target to help through Facebook advertising, for example. So we use Facebook advertising a lot for our customers. We've had great success with it. Um, we're going to be using it a lot for Curiosity when that launches. But the key demographics, are, this is what we are seeing and this is what we're advising. And not one of these demographics may be suitable for your business. It may be an amalgamation of a couple of these or all of them or maybe just one of them. But these may just give you a little spark of, of creativity and thinking, OK, right, what can I do for this demographic? So let me just go through some of these just now before we go into a little bit more stats. The over 60s um, is going to be a bigger market going forward. Um, they'll think of what's happening in the cruise industry, um, cruise ships and cruise liners, a lot of, especially the UK and a lot of other destinations are advising against going on to cruises, which is going to affect insurance and everything else. Um, so, but most of, a lot of uh, over 60s are actually becoming more online as well but they all still want to travel. So they're coming more online, they're creating Facebook accounts uh, and they're, they're doing more video chats, basically because they've had to um, and they've had to keep in touch with family and friends going forward. So you'll probably find that they're creating more Facebook accounts, which means you can target them more on Facebook, for example. But not only that, though, the over 60s market are, are doing more online shopping because they've had to, you know, not been able to go to the shops. They've been getting grocery deliveries to them as well. So they're becoming more confident online. So I believe, and from what we are seeing, is this market is going to be bigger going forward and easier to target going forward. So think about the over 60s market as a possible market for you if you're not already looking at this market. Students as well. No, students are, are have all been a furlough. They've all been in lockdown, as we all know. And, and I don't want to tarnish students all with the same brush. Um, but they all like to go out to cafes with their with their uh, with their friends, with their family, going to nightclubs, going to bars. They've not been able to do that. So probably for the first time in their lives, they've been saving money. So that could be a potential market for you going forward in terms of getting students out for a food tour or taking a, you know, going into a, 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 an Airbnb somewhere and going to a cabin with a hot tub and all these other things that students like, would like to do, just getting away from it and spending good quality time with each other. Students could be another market going forward, so that's maybe one to think about as well. Corporate and local businesses. Now, again, the business owner myself, all my staff have been working from home. Luckily, I've not had to furlough anyone. We've all been working very hard for, for every tour operator we work with and just advising tour operators in general worldwide. Um, but corporate and local businesses have had staff working at home. Finally, some destinations are starting to get back into their offices, etc. But they've lost, you no, know, there's been something lost with that because the last three or four months, that connection has been lost between staff, between employers, uh, and creating team building opportunities for employers to get their staff together. Social distancing, obviously, into, into account, but getting staff together to re establish those connections and just get everyone together again and just have, you no know, build up, you no know, have a good time before they go back into the office and, and really work work hard. So team building, corporate, local businesses, that could be a good one going forward to target. And again, all these you can target easily on Facebook, which we'll show you uh, shortly. Another one, obviously, is families with children. I have two kids myself. I've got a 10-year-old daughter and a four-year-old son. My four-year-old son pretty much take care of, takes care of himself. You know, he's just happy to have his mum and dad around. Uh, but my daughter has broken down a couple of times because she felt, you know, especially when all this kicked off, um, she felt she was never going to see her friends again. You know, she's not in school, which she enjoys. She enjoys going to school. She enjoys seeing her friends. So she has broken down. So getting families out and just getting to enjoy, you know, enjoy each other, letting kids be kids again, letting kids meet up with some of their school friends and, and getting together and enjoying life again. And that will just help even just giving the parents a little bit of a break as well. You know, so families with children are going to be huge going forward. They will be looking for something to do. Trust me, we are looking for something to do. So give them something, whether it's tours, whether it's activities, whether it's accommodation, whatever that is. Give them something that's more focused on children. No, tr uh, gamify it as well. No, tr uh, treasure hunts and no, little things when they're running about a park to give them something to do, to mark off all these little things as well, or sites to see that they mark off. Give them something that gamifies your tours as well, which is going to be great for children. So think about that aspect as well. 
No issues celebrated a milestone. No, we might be in lockdown for the past three or four months, but we've still people have still celebrate, celebrated birthdays, anniversaries, births of a child. All that hasn't stopped. The only fortunate thing is, is those who have celebrated that have had to celebrate it usually over a Zoom chat or some sort of video call with their family and friends. So you can target specifically people who have had a birthday on Facebook to come out to one of your tours or to accommodation or whatever that would be. So you can target them specifically. And we're going to show you a little bit of that later on in terms of how you can target that on things like Facebook. But those people will just want to get out and celebrate properly. That could be, you know, a food tour, for example, would be a great example for that because a food tour is a great way to bring people together. Food is a great way to bring people together. So combine that with family and friends and celebrating something. They'll offer a glass of bubbly as part of their celebration, as part of your product. That's that's a perceived value, as I was saying earlier on. Give them a free bottle of bubbly. doesn't need to be the most expensive, but something like that can help add that little bit of extra to it to make them celebrate. So think, about, think a little bit out of the box. Frontline staff is another one that you can target on Facebook. You know, your doctors, your nurses, uh, people who have been, let's be frank, working their arse off to make sure that the world is ticking over, make sure that most of us are staying safe uh, and, and, and being able to live and, and live our lives as we can. You can target them specifically on Facebook. And to be honest, this would be the only time that I would say would be ideal for a discount. Um, if there was to be a discount on anything. They're giving more of a thank you to the frontline staff. So this would be saying, hey, come out on our tours, come out to stay with us. Here is a 20% discount, plus maybe a bottle of wine or something like that, um, or, by, or adding even more perceived value to it. If you don't want to discount, there's something to say thank you to these guys, because these guys will just want to get out, even if it's for a weekend or a night, they will want to get out and do something just to get away from let's face it, the crap that I've had to deal with over the last few months. So just, that could be a good one going forward, and just as a way as a thank you, but also will make you feel better as well uh, by, uh, by helping this, helping frontline staff. So now I want to do is just go into some of the things that you can target on Facebook, just to sort of show you what can be done. So here's Facebook, um, I've selected San Francisco, uh, and I'm looking at, you can see here, you can select people with birthdays per, uh, by month. So you can basically select uh, or target people with a birthday in the previous months from now. So we're in July now, coming up to the end of July uh, during this recording. So you could target people in f February, March, April, May, when COVID sort of really took hit, especially from March onwards, when COVID really took uh, took control uh, or took hold of everyone, um, and target them to say and run ads to say, hey, come back out, celebrate properly, come and enjoy your time with us. You could do that on Facebook now. Target them now and get them to hopefully come out and take a tour out with you. Um, again, just to sort of show you here, here's uh, San Francisco again. You can see that there's 94,000 people in San Francisco between 18 and 65 who have had a birthday in March, April and May, who are also foodies, so who love food. So for, again, for food tour companies, that is there, they're there already. There's 94,000 people you could be targeting right now in terms of trying to uh, bring them out and celebrate a birthday or a milestone. Here's the same thing, but in uh, Paris, same criteria. There's 130,000 people. So no, birthdays just haven't stopped because of COVID. Here it is in London, same criteria. 280,000 people celebrated birthdays in March, April, and May. So it just shows you that this could be easily targeted on Facebook with the right campaign. So here's London. Uh, this is for frontline staff. 63,000 people could be targeted on Facebook, and it doesn't need to be expensive. You could run an ad for five pounds, five dollars a day, targeting these this demographic. So between 63,000 people in London between 18 and 65 who are like nurses, doctors, are in the healthcare, you could add as many other frontline staff to this, which would increase the, the, the potential reach. You could target them right now, right now with a little while to say thank you, come out on us um, uh, and uh, enjoy your time because of the last few months. So here's Glasgow from my own home city, uh, which I found interesting as well. 19,000 people in Glasgow. Um, no, Glasgow doesn't have a huge population compared to some other cities. No, the whole of London pretty much is has the same uh, uh, population as the whole of Scotland uh, or nearabouts. So, um, but Glasgow, ninety thousand people who are aged only between sixty and sixty-five plus who have an interest in museum and art. So, this is people in that age group, the older demographic, who love museums, who love art, who want to do that type of, uh, who like that type of product. 
you could target 19,000 people right now with a really effective Facebook ad. So most, uh, most tour types, most business types in tourism will be able to select specific age groups and be able to target these people right now to help build, whether it's bookings just now, or if you can't take up bookings just now, it's for creating an interest list to generate interest for when you can take bookings now. For a number of our own customers who, who are not able to take bookings just now, we are asking people through Facebook ads to sign up now, now uh, reserve your dates in the future, and don't have to pay anything now. And what that is doing is building up an email marketing list, it's building up a potential customer list that they can then target as soon as restrictions are lifted. They can say, hey, now we've got these dates now, why don't you take out a tour with us? We reserved this for you, do you still want to take that out? It just helps you build up that momentum while you're still in lockdown and then things things are lifted, you have an audience there already that you can target. So here is, uh, this was actually um, uh, someone, it was Chris from uh, Totally Swiss Tours, um, who is predominantly sort of multi-day tours. And he says, oh, he, he says, look, there isn't that many people who would be interested from domestic-wise coming into Switzerland. So you know, we're doing a little test with them, uh, which we'll hopefully share the results with that soon. But this is just to show you, you know, those locations around Switzerland. So Australia, uh, Austria, sorry, Belgium, Germany, France, Croatia, Italy, aged between 35 and 65, who have an interest in Switzerland and who are also interested in short breaks. There's 5,300 people in those areas that he could be targeting right now. His products are slightly more, because uh, of the multi-day, they're higher target, higher priced. So that 5,300 is ideal. Target those people, get them into Switzerland, get them to register their interest, uh, and then he'll create a tailored tour around that. Um, but 5,300 people could be targeted right now. And as we've already said, some of these destinations have already lifted their restrictions, are wanting to travel, the demand is there. It's just giving them the right inspiration and, and a little push and a little nudge in the right direction. So what I want to do now is showing you some of the Google Trends uh, from what we're seeing in various destinations. And this is pretty much the same for every single destination. It's showing you that your customers are looking at things now and they're already looking for things to do. So here is tours in France. You can see there around March when the dip happens, when COVID hit. Um, and this is people searching for tours. And now we're starting to see that climb into, uh, into June, uh, the 21st of June when this screenshot was taken. Tours are starting to increase in terms of search volume. So people are looking for things to do, tours in France. Here's Airbnb again, as I mentioned earlier on, looking at the key indicators of flights or accommodation. Airbnb searches in France have shot right up. So people are looking, especially in June and July, are looking right into this to say, okay, what can I do now? Hotels, again, similar story. It's shot right up. People are looking for things to do. They're looking for places to stay. So if they're looking for places to stay, they want activities to do in that area. And this is whether it's domestic or not. Scotland, Airbnb, again, same criteria. It's the dip and then going back up. Again, in Scotland, hotels, similar story. So you can see the trend here. People are looking for things to do. And this is when you, this is where you really need to start putting content out there and some marketing materials and videos and Facebook ads and things like that. Google ads to a certain extent now as well. People are starting to search more. So why don't you get into the search rankings? While OTAs aren't really spending that much money at the moment in terms of Google ads, you, this can give you a little bit of a, a, a window of opportunity there. So tr think about that as well. So this is in Scotland, and what I wanted to show you that it literally happened um, within a week. That between the fifth of June, uh, sorry, fifth of July to eleventh of July, people searching for tour-related products well, it was around the sort of thirty-three per day-ish sort of thing, an average of that. Literally within a week, that shot up by nearly double. And if if we uh, if we were to look at the stats now, that has shot up even more. So people are looking for things to do. In fact, here it is, um, just from the other week there, again, you can see it's still steady climb. So again, people are looking for tours and activities and what they're looking to do now. From that dip, people are starting to get interested again. So it's now is the time to really think about what you want to do marketing-wise. The big one, as I've said time and time again in various articles and, and talks and, and the, the, the coronavirus battle plan that I put out, outdoor activities is going to be huge. If you do anything in your products that are outdoor activities, Look at the stats. No, that's all of a sudden that just shot up uh, of the week of the twelfth of July. 
it's shot up massively. People are looking for things to do outside. Again, we've all been stuck and looking at the same four walls pretty much for the last four months. People just want to get out and do something. Demand is there. Peter Simon will be testament to this. He's seen that demand. The demand is there for many destinations. So look at the trends, see what's happening in your industry and in your destination and see if it follows a similar trend. And if it is, get, get start getting your, your message out there and getting market, get your marketing out there. One we've already known about, um, a, lot of, a lot of talk has been around already, has been virtual tours. There was a, an interest, sort of March, April time, but it has waned, no. Um, virtual tours, to a certain extent, will work for some businesses, and it is working for some businesses. No, Walk, uh, Walks are doing a, a really good job of that at the moment as well, a few other companies. But on the whole, it's not there to generate you lots of revenue. Um, I see things like virtual tours, which are... For my opinion, nothing more than a glorified marketing video. Um, those will or, uh, be more of a lead-in tool. So I can see them basically becoming free or very low cost. And then that will basically allow them to sort of see what you do, see your expertise. And then that will come in to lead them into actually taking out a proper product from you. So virtual tours will have its place and I think will always have its place. Um, it may increase through time, but I see it more as a lead-in tool. Um, and as an add-on to an existing product. Uh, so to give an example, um, Beer Secrets, um, uh, one, of our, one of our customers, they run virtual tours, but what they do first is they send out uh, a, a box of beer, of the, the beer tasting experience. So they send out that box of beer to the, those in their domestic sort of areas. And then once they get that, there's a, a link, a login that they go in, and Lisa Lott, who, who runs that company, will do a tour online, giving them the tasting notes, giving them more about the history of the beer and doing that. That's where I see virtual tours being part of a product and, and working really well on its own. I see it nothing more than a, uh, a sort of lead into, as I say. Ultimately, it's all about assessing, adapting and surviving. So assess your current situation, assess what your market is doing now through Google Trends, through what others are saying. I've showed some of the stats already. Domestic is certainly going to be the big one going forward for the next 18 to 24 months. Adapt your business to work for that, that type of market, for, to work for what's happening in your industry. Don't just sit back and think international travel is going to pick back up again anytime soon. It is not. I guarantee you it is not. So adapt your business for it. And then that will hopefully allow you to survive until we get back, hopefully, to sort of pre-2019 levels, pre-COVID levels. Um, that's what we all want. Uh, it will happen. It will just take time. You know, travel has change forever but it will pick up again it will get back to those levels it may just be different from what we're used to but there is opportunities there so make sure you assess adapt and survive and make sure that you have a tourism business within the next 18 to 24 months